Welcome to Major Keys. I'm here with Olympic runner Colleen Quigley. Thank you so much for joining me. How are you? Happy to be here. I'm doing well. Ready to end 2020 for sure. Ready to end 2020 for sure. My first question, and I ask this of all my guests, can you give me your sports journey in 60 seconds? So I know oh. it's a short amount of time, right? But if sure. you could try to just wrap it up uh, into a bow of 60 seconds summary. Oh my gosh. Okay. Right? Here we go. You start when you're ready. Um, I grew up dancing, tap jazz ballet and playing soccer. And then when I got to high school, I started running. I joined the cross country team and then the track team. And then I stopped dancing. I stopped playing soccer and I just focused on running. Um, ended up going to Florida State University for college, ran cross country and track for the Knowles for four years. And then when I graduated, I was NCAA champion and I got the opportunity to go pro um, and join the Bowerman Track Club and sign with a sponsor, Nike, out in um, Portland, Oregon. So I joined the team, went pro, made my first Olympic team in 2016. And I am continuing to train now, hoping to make the team again um, to go to Tokyo, which was supposed to be the summer, but now it's going to be next summer for my second Olympic Games. Definitely looking forward to that. Um, I know one thing that I noticed um, on your website and um, on your blog on your website was that you modeled at one point, you know, and had to kind of choose between modeling and, and running. What made you choose running at the end of the day? Yeah, so I'm visiting my folks and I'm coming at you from my old um, bedroom, from my old like high school bedroom. Um, and this is where I was when I was doing some of that modeling. I was going to high school, um, all girls Catholic high school, plaid skirt, collared shirt, you know, the whole nine yards. And I would um, miss um, anywhere from like, I don't know, 20 to 30 days a semester to go travel around and model. I had an agency in, here in St. Louis and then I had an agency in New York, Wilhelmina Models. Um, and yeah, they sent me all across the country and sometimes around the world to do jobs and it was really fun. Um, I luckily was doing it kind of more for fun and not really um, pressured to like support the family or do it. Um, if I wasn't having fun, I could stop at any time, which was, I think really helped make the experience really fun for me. Um, and I always had one of my parents traveling with me to make sure that everything was good to go. Um, and then, yeah, I think my senior year, I had the choice, right? Do I want to pursue this career? Do I want to move to New York and be a model full time and um, kind of try and, you know, make a bunch of money and become famous? Or do I want to go um, to Florida State, accept a full ride, go to school for free, run in the NCAA, be part of this team and you know be coached by this amazing woman who was trying to get me to go to school there and I just yeah it felt like that was the right thing to do was accept the scholarship and focus on something that I really felt I could be proud of something that I could work really hard at and then when I achieved whatever it was that I achieved I could say I did that you know I worked my tail off and I achieved that rather than I always felt like the modeling part was just kind of luck um, good genetics and, you know, whatever society at the time felt like was, um, you know, an appealing look, you know, I didn't really have that much to do with it, I felt like. And so with running, I really felt like I could work hard and I could dedicate myself to this. And then I could really feel proud of, you know, what I accomplished. And so I ended up, you know, going to Florida State. And I remember freshman year in the dorm feeling like, thank God I made this decision because this is where I am meant to be. And I was just so happy um, being part of the team and just never really looked back. That's such a great perspective and an insight for, you know, most people don't have that sort of experience, but they do have, you know, something else that they are passionate about. So I think that's a great perspective to lend. Who were some of your sports role models growing up? Oh gosh, that's such a good question. A lot of people ask me that, like, you know, who were the the women or men in sports I looked up to as a kid? And it's funny because I don't really feel like I had much of awareness of like what, you know, what pro athletes were doing. I didn't even know in high school that you could be a pro runner. Like I didn't realize that was a thing that you could do. I like, vaguely maybe understood because my parents um, are, you know, big runners themselves doing marathons and stuff. And so we'd get like track and field news would get sent to the house. Um, so maybe I saw like, you know, some vague awareness, but I, w I never was like, oh, I want to be like you, 
Um, and and that was kind of, that's kind of interesting to look back on because now I feel really proud when I hear young girls or parents of young girls say that you know their daughter looks up to me and wants to be a steeplechaser like me. And I just think I'm like, wow, that's so special that she sees something in me and you know like aspires to be that and and it feels really cool i think because i don't know that i was ever really that aware um and i think actually social media has been you know it's not always good and it definitely has its downfalls but i think that has been one major benefit of social media is that it gives me the ability to access um young girls and gives them access to me and my story so much more um readily and just more um personal than you know maybe i had access to as a kid but now i think now i look up to women like serena williams or allison felix um is my track and field idol she's a mom and the most decorated track and field, U.S. track and field athlete, um, and has done great things often on the track. So definitely look up to, you know, women like that now. It's very interesting that you say, you know, that is definitely one of the benefits of social yeah. media because I have this like ax to grind about, you know, uh, the comparison that young girls have to make in watching, you know, these makeup tutorials and all these different things. And, and my theory is they're not playing sport as much anymore because of those things. But I mean, to your point, it, it, there is that positive aspect of they do have access to people like you as well. You know, you know, maybe the other content may not be the best thing for them to focus on, but they also have that that uh, opportunity to be able to find you on those spaces. Yeah, as well. it's, a, it's a double edged sword yeah. for sure. And you're right. The statistics about young girls dropping out of sport at rates higher than ever are you know, so sad and it feels like we have better access and better um, opportunities for young girls than probably ever before. And so wondering, there's so many reasons that go into that of why they're dropping out or why they're not interested in sport or why they, you know, decide to go in another direction. Um, but yeah, anything that I can do to kind of um, inspire them or encourage them to keep working and, you know, keep playing whatever sport it is that they're passionate about, whether it's running or soccer or dance or softball, like whatever it is, just to keep working at it and having fun with it. Um, I think that's the biggest, you know, add to social media that I can give to these girls. Love that. Why were sports so important for you growing up? I don't know. I was always active. I don't know that I ever thought about not playing a sport and, you know, I, I include dance um, as a sport too. And so, yeah, we were just always playing, always using our bodies. I've always been really competitive. So um, I have an older brother and I was even competitive with him, always trying to catch up with him and do things as, as good as him. Um, so I think that, you know, that fire for sure. But we were always just encouraged as kids to move our bodies and be active and express ourselves um, that way. And I think my parents did a really good job of making sure that I was having a lot of fun with it the whole time and not putting too much pressure on me, not trying to um, push me too hard, just letting me explore and see what I liked. And, you know, I like dance. Okay, now I like soccer. Now I like track. They were just like, encouraging me and and being supportive of of any of those interests wherever it took me and letting me kind of explore it at my own time my own pace so I always recommend that to, to young athletes too and what did it teach you or like what characteristics do you think that you built oh gosh, so many things um I think I really realized in college the benefits of learning how to work on a team and be a really good teammate um and and eventually in college later in college a good team leader I learned so many lessons when I got to be the captain of my team in college about how to lead people on your team in a way that you know tried to help them be better and show them how to be good teammates without forcing them to do what you wanted them to do and uh, imposing your own kind of itinerary on them, um, but allowing them to figure it out for themselves and kind of um, guide them along the way and show them, lead them by example without, you know, um, trying to make them fit into whatever mold that that you had in mind for them. Um, but it is definitely a process. And I think, you know, just doing is is always going to be better than being too afraid to make mistakes and then not doing anything at all so i definitely made mistakes a, a, along the way as i went um but i you know i learned a lot and i think became a better teammate and a better friend and um a better leader because of of those experiences i'm i'm la laughing and shaking my head so vigorously because i had that same realization really? <laughs> 
I played basketball in college and I was a captain for a couple of years. And you learn that the hard way, like trying yeah. not to push people into to that mold. And but it makes you a better leader um, at the end of the day, sure. and a better teammate. So I'm for glad sure. to hear that. And that goes across any sport for sure. You know, it doesn't matter what kind of team you're on. It's all the same lessons and all, you know, the same mil- kind of melding personalities and trying to get everyone to work together. That is so universal, no matter what team you're on, which is cool. Yes. Yeah. And even after sport, you know, like I'm just a regular person these days and that's my job that, you know, it's so important managing people and leading a team. Um, Before the last Olympics, like you said, you turned pro in 2015, the Olympics were in 2016. So I'm sure that was a memorable and kind of fast moving um, experience with a lot of memories. Um, But as you also mentioned, this year's Olympics were postponed for Tokyo. So what, I guess, how have you handled the postponement of this Olympics? Yeah, it was definitely a shock. You know, we all started 2020 with 2020 vision and Tokyo 2020. And we were so amped up about it. And the year got off to a really good start with indoor track. Uh, We were really fit in January and February and running really well. And then everything just kind of (laughs) like came to a halt. (laughs) Um, So that was really hard at first, I think. But I think once they made the announcement that, okay, we're postponing, you know, a year, we felt at least I felt like, okay, this is the right thing to do. And, you know, it was kind of inevitable that they were going to have to make that call. And then we could just start to move on and say, okay, new plan. You know, we have another year now, what are we going to do with a whole nother year of preparation? And I think for me, um, I've just been injured a lot in the past couple of years, especially in 2018 and 2019. Um, so my biggest goal was like, all right, I have a whole nother year to train and I really need to stay healthy so that I can put in some consistent training um, and have a whole nother year under my belt before, you know, I get to, to put on that team USA uniform again. So I tried to really almost immediately just see it as a positive and as an opportunity um, for extra time and extra growth. So I could be even better than I would have been this summer. And so, so far so good. Didn't get any major injuries this year, was able to train really hard. And we did some, some racing this summer, some adjusted racing, um, and hoping for the opportunity to do some more normal racing in the spring and summer this year before we go to Tokyo. But yeah, it's been a different, different type of year, but I think myself and my teammates have all adjusted pretty well and, and just gotten in the work whenever and however we can. Yeah. 2020 vision that (laughs) didn't quite pan out for anyone. Uh, (laughs) But uh, I guess, what are you specifically looking forward to, you know, as you headed to preparing, but, you know, looking forward to, you know, making the team or performing well at trials. What, what are you looking forward to in that process? I really hope that, um, you know, they can, we were talking about recently, what are we going to do with like the fans in Tokyo? We're going to, are we going to be allowed to have fans? Um, Maybe they'll allow anyone who's had the vaccine to come and be a fan. Um, So I'm, I'm really hoping that we can have like a true Olympics where we have an opening ceremonies and we are able to have at least some fans and kind of have it be a celebration because it has been such a hard year for everyone. And in so many ways, sports helps bring people together, um, helps unite people and give them something to cheer for and something to celebrate. Um, So I really hope that the Olympics can be that for everyone all across the world to come together and compete um, in a a quote unquote normal way again and um, and have people cheering for us and, you know, getting into it and then just celebrate um, that we are able to, you know, host this amazing international competitive um, games. So I'm really looking forward to that and hoping that it can happen. I'm I'm looking forward to as a fan. I've been obsessed with the Olympics for well, at this point, many, many years. Um, we're actually around the same age. So it's uh, probably, I guess, since high school. High yeah. school, I've been pretty obsessed with it. So um, uh, my last challenge, I guess, is, <laughs> and I call this segment, it's a vibe, okay? Nice. So, so what is a trend that, that you have witnessed or a part of, um, like recently, that you are enjoying? So it could be social media, it could be fashion, it could be anything. Just something that's a vibe. <laughs> I love cooking. So my my alter ego on Instagram is Chef Colleen. <laughs> and I'm loving seeing all these cooking videos um, on reels that are like just instant. It can show you in 15 or 20 or 15 or 30 seconds how to make something by just like 
boom, boom. Then you add this, then you do this, then you mix that, boom, bake, done, out, boom. And you're like, whoa, that was so cool. And so I'm trying to, um, my, my editing skills leave something to be desired at the moment, but I'm working on it. And I'm really into um, showing people why I like to cook in the kitchen in you know 30 seconds or less. Um, and hopefully inspire people to get in their own kitchens more and cook more and, and make you know food for themselves and their loved ones that taste good and looks good and is nutritious and feeds their bodies. So I guess Instagram, real cooking videos, it's a vibe. <laughs> it's, it's wild to think that reels did not exist really before the pandemic. Uh, totally. and, and we feel like we've lived with them for a while now. So yeah, totally. uh, and my last question, is the show is called major keys so what is a major key that you would give to girls women um it can be a, about anything but just to help them along in their journey mm, gosh there's so many major keys to to being a woman and being a woman is hard and we need there's lots of keys that we need in order to feel good and be successful um, I think one of the major biggest keys for, for me and my career and my life, and my happiness has been surrounding myself with other women who build me up and support me and help me, whether that's in workouts, which is definitely true. My teammates who push me to be better in workouts, I know that I wouldn't be the athlete I am without having teammates who are honestly, who are better than me to push me and, you know, and push my limits. Um, but also just there to support me if I'm having a bad day, if I'm having, you know, something in my personal life go on or just having a bad workout, they're there to push me and make me better, but they're also there to help pick me up and, you know, give me a hug or just, you know, someone to chat to for an hour while we, we get a run in and I can talk about whatever's going on or hear what's going on with them. And, I think my career as a runner would a be less successful, you know, on the track, but also just way more lonely if I hadn't always surrounded myself with really solid teammates and the, the women in, in high school, college, and as a pro that um, I was teammates with, you know, I, I just can't imagine having gone through my running career without all those women along the way. So just surround yourself with people who support you, who make you better, uh, who build you up and, and don't tear you down and, you know, make you a better athlete and a better human. That's great advice for women in and out of sports. So that's perfect. Yeah. Colleen, thank you so much for joining me. This has been really fun and yeah, um, looking fun. forward to, to, again, to watching you and your process for the Olympics. And I have to admit, I myself am a, a self-professed person who hates running. <laughs> I cannot. <laughs> What'd you say? You're not alone. A lot of oh. people don't like running. It's okay. <laughs> yes, I, I have a, a difficult time, but now in my retirement age of no longer being an athlete, I have to put up with it sometimes. But um, I'm, I'm garbage at playing basketball, so we all have our things. <laughs> Absolutely. But thank you for joining me. I know your schedule is busy and I know you're at home visiting family. So I appreciate your time. And again, looking forward to your continued journey. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me on the show. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe and do all the things. And I'll see you here next time on Major Keys. Keys, keys, keys. I got the keys.